This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents. All right, before we get started, allow me to make a confession. I am haunted by a ghost, but that ghost is Mitch Hedberg, so it's really not that scary. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, on planet X. Before we begin, let me give you a little history of our solar system. We have had nine accepted planets in our solar system, agreed upon by politicians, scientists, and religious men. And there are always exceptions to that rule. Batting a hundred percent agreement amongst this crowd on any single issue is damn impossible. So, first nine planets in our solar system were, in order of closest to the sun, to farthest away. One one, Mercury. Two, Venus. Three, Mother Earth. Four, Mars. Five, Jupiter. Six, Saturn. Seven, Uranus. Eight, Neptune. Nine, Pluto. It was like, hey, yeah, cool. We have nine planets. Nobody disagreed about it. Everybody was like, cool. People were looking for planet 10. They're like, hey, the solar system is a big place. Galaxy is a big place. Universe is a bigger place. So there's got to be another planet out there we hadn't seen yet, right? The Bible talks about it. Bottom talked about it. So we were always hunting. And well, they found it. Back in 2005, January 5th. I found it because some other dudes found it. And planet X is Eris. E R I S. Mike Brown and his team at the Palomar Observatory found Eris. And this is no small potato. And back in the day, in 2006 when they figured out that Eris was bigger than Pluto, they made Eris the 10th planet for like a day. Eris. It has a satellite called Dysnomia. There's no debating that. Planet Eris is Planet X, the Roman numeral for 10. So STFU haters and debaters, you were probably looking for Planet U. No, not Uranus. I mean Planet Unknown. Like Nibiru, Hirokolubus, Wormwood, whatever the unknown mythical planet is. That is not Planet X. Planet X is Eris. Planet 9 is Pluto. Everybody else kiss my butt. See? Alright. Okay, great. And who got Planet Planet promoted for a day. Eris. Planet 10. Planet X. See? I win. You win too. We all win by knowing the truth. Because when you're armed with the truth, only bullets and knives and hurtful words can hurt you. And then they decided that it would be much easier for Americans to remember eight planets by demoting Pluto. And everybody got all butt hurt in their hearts and minds over Pluto being demoted. Which I thought was silly. Because didn't Shakespeare say something that some other guy said about a rose by any other name still smells delicious and chocolatey as a rose. And then they decided that it would be much easier for Americans remember eight planets by demoting Pluto than it would be for them to recognize Eris as the 10th planet and Ceres, Sedna, Vesta, Make, Make, Quar, Hame, Sharon, and Orcus as the 18th planets in our solar system. I guess I thought that would freak everybody out. People would throw their cats out the window. Babies would start smoking cigarettes and things would just go crazy. So they, they didn't release that information. Make, make. I like to say make, make. That should be the awesome new way to order a double drink. Make, make me a delicious alcoholic beverage. That is a super cool new way of ordering a double. Make, make me a crown and coke. Elongated shape like two drinks. Graphics win. They didn't release that information. Instead, they made a big huge hubbub about Pluto being demoted. Everybody remembers who got demoted. Pluto. Who remembers why? Why did Pluto get demoted? Because Eris was bigger. So they figured eight planets was easier for people than 18. Because you fudge brains can't handle much in the critical thinking and imagination department. I'm just kidding. Not talking about you. I'm talking about the fudge brains who are not watching this video. Because clearly if you're watching my video, you are a sharp tack. I guess they think you guys are a bunch of marshmallow brains who can't even handle out the dynecopatromity of a booger. I guess they think you guys are a bunch of <laughs> marshmallow brains. Who can't handle anything new and too wacky. Like, oh my god, the earth is flat. No, it's round. Oh my god, my head exploded. My head has exploded. Can one of you fine ladies put my head back together for me? That was a joke. Really? Yeah, a woman's gonna put your head back together. Alright, I found Planet X because they found it. Makes you wonder about the term found. The difference between found, discovered, claimed. There's a fine line and a lot of wiggle room at the exact same time. But we will cover the subject of the other nine planets in part two of this video. The new planets in our solar system. For now, we're going to talk about how Eris is the planet X, planet 10. And I think the main reason they didn't tell us that we have 18 planets now instead of demoting Pluto to 8 is because they knew American science scores would go down at least 3% by having to have kids name 18 planets in the solar system instead of 8. They had a hard enough time. Imagine writing a song. Okay, okay. Give you some facts. First of all, the time they were just calling it 2003, UB13. Then they decided to name it Eris after the god of Discord and strife because they have a sense of humor like that. Planet Eris has its own adjective, Iridian. In the minor planet category, Eris is known as a dwarf planet, a trans-Neptunian object, plutoid, scattered disk object, and a binary because of dysnomia. It's satellite, just like our moon. Zephelion is 97.6 AU. It's perihelion is 38.375 AU. Its semi-major axis is 68.01 AU. Orbital period is 560 years, give or take. Its average orbital speed is 3.46 kilometers per second, which is really pretty dang slow. Its inclination is 43.844, which is really pretty dang high. Its mass is 0 0.0028 Earths, or 0 0.23 moons, meaning four heiresses would make a moon. And what you might not realize is the moon is giant in comparison to other solar objects in our system. So Eris is the most massive known dwarf planet in our solar system. Dwarfs 
can have more influence and awesomeness than other larger objects. Size doesn't designate much. See Tyrion from Games of Thrones for me to validate the subject, or for you to validate what I just said. Did you know that Eris is 27% more massive than Pluto? Have you ever noticed that the faraway planetoids and planets are always thought to be either big rocks or big blocks of ice with no atmosphere? Although all the data visual-wise on Pluto and other planets would suggest otherwise. That is a discussion for another video, probably part two or three in this series. My brothers and sisters. In part two of this series, we will discuss the other new planets in our solar system. And in part three, we will discuss the search for planet U. All right, calling it planet U is probably way too confusing for you guys since you're going to get it confused with your anus. So we'll call it call the unknown planet R that is referred to in religions and mythologies and prophecies as planet R for Donald Rumsfeld with his known knowns, known unknowns, and unknown unknowns, which is like black swans and stuff. Black swans, white swans, rainbow swans, Natalie Portman swans. Natalie Portman making out with Mila Kunis swans. Oh my god. Stay on target! I would guess the average American could name five to seven planets with Earth, Mars, Venus, Mercury, Jupiter, and Uranus being the most well-known. <laughs> Get it? Oh my god. Um. Stay on target! Eight or eighteen. Thor News presents Planet X. Known unknowns. Or new planets in our solar system. Or the hunt for the unknown planet. Now how much do we really know about star creation, solar formation, and dark antimatter penetration? I don't care if you're one of the people who think planet X is five times the size of Jupiter and in between the sun and Venus. Or you don't believe any type of planet X exists at all ever. A hundred years from now, a thousand years from now, or a million years from now. Hey, hardcore planet Xers, I'm in the tank with you at heart. I'm just trying to teach you something. Yes, I know. Whoa, I better dial it back. Nobody likes peachy teachy. But stay with me here. I'm taking little steps to lead you to the big picture. Overall, in the math of the Oark cloud, the unknown planet and planets have to exist. Planet Dwarf Star exists. Dwarf might have been the lamest science name ever. Leave it to humans to name a protoplanet or a planet a dwarf. I mean, can you imagine them like naming a dwarf car? Yeah, it's the new Dwarf Lexus. No. Dwarf Twinkies. Dwarf Hamburgers. This could be a good time, said Oribe, a Hopi Nation elder. Just because it's a brand new planet doesn't mean it's bad things. Uh, we don't really know how the universe works, so it could be badass. I mean, like, we don't know how the Earth go from stop making dinosaurs to start making human beings. Who knows what we're going to be next? We're going to be, like, extra awesome, which would be awesome. Why did Earth stop making dinosaurs and start making humans? We know very little about solar system formation. And that has giant gaping holes in it. The unknown unknown exists. See, the search for Planet X used to be for all of us classic romantics. But then they tagged it, that Nibiru crap, and made anyone who even talked about it look like a tinfoil hat wearing booger shake drinking thumb sucker who sniffs his own poop for fun. There are still many unanswered questions about heavenly mechanics. Planet X, what is it? It's the unknown planet. It seems less a planet and more a star. Spectacular. And if you don't date your shit in five billion or so years, when the Andromeda galaxy collides with the Milky Way, our solar system will most def have a new planet or two and whatever the latest version of our solar system is. So is the OR cloud the name of our solar system? It's basic math, man. That in this giant OR cloud, when they say the Milky Way has hundreds of billions of stars, and it also has to have hundreds of billions of planets, and that suns are moving. I don't know if you knew that, but it's true. As spiral galaxies slowly rotate, the spiral galaxy becomes more twisted up as the spiral becomes tighter, causing all things to contract. I don't know if you knew that, but it's true. We have explored less than point oh 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 one percent of the known universe. Rule number one in the hunt for the unknown planet. Do not get bogged down in semantics. Planet X, the unknown planet, has many names. Herculubus. Wormwood, Marduk, Destroyer, Planet of the Crossing, Tiamat, Nibiru, Nemesis, Red Kachina, The Winged Planet, Tachi. Now each one of those names has its own flavors that go along with the legend. Wormwood from the Bible. But it is strange because common associations that they all seem to have is that it's red. Whatever this unknown planet star dwarvian thing is, is red. It's surrounded by giants dust cloud of iron oxide. Does any of this make any sense? Hey dude, I like beer, and that is not part of this discussion. What we're discussing here is just the unknown planets. Planets we don't know about yet, but there have to be a lot of them. Most of the time, we just looked on the elliptic for other planets. Like, hey dude, there are no other planets on the elliptic, so there are probably not other planets. Know your garden. 
like when they said Nibiru, it had some association that like people were saying that, yeah, giant reptiles, giant reptile aliens live on the planet and they're going to come here. And they're going to enslave us. And then they're going to take all of our gold, our silver, our oil, and our women. Hey, wait a minute. That does sound like the last hundred years. But I progress. Because progressing is not even a word. Yes, I know. As far as I know, the most planet x of all the new planets, planetoids, dwarf planets, is Sedna. Sedna is a complete and total badass. Sedna makes Chuck Norris look like a wimp. Sedna makes Chuck Norris look wimpier than a cupcake in a dress. I mean, it's got a 12,000 to 11,000 year orbit. Who could do that, dude? Who could carve their own orbit out of a 12,000 year circle? Circle? Stay with me here. They're slowly assembling the known universe. Milky Way solar system. I got a funny feeling Sedna is made of super iron or super ion iron. It's the reddest object known to man. WTF does that even mean? How much of a Wolverine, Thor, Zeus, Hercules hero must you be to be able to clear your own 12,000 year orbit? And if you hardcore planet Xers have hung on long enough, you will, son of a poop bucket, notice that Sedna has an orbit much like that of the old school sketches of Planet X. Um, infrared. Be good to each other, Planet X. It's the one legends, mythologies, and religions have spoken of that we don't know. We haven't found yet. How old is the legend? It's old as man writing on caves. The search has been going on forever. It did kick up into a new gear in the 1980s. We look at the universe and act like we know everything about planets and stars. And we've never stepped foot on a planet or a star. So how much can we know? We're like fish in a pond looking up at a woman on her cell phone. And we, the fish, we think we can fully understand the intricacies of AT&T's data billing system. Doesn't make any sense. You prefer to be lightly educated and strongly opinionated. But that is a habit you can break, you know. Create community. It is time to speak the truth. Do not look outside yourself for the leader. Sums of stars like strands of DNA. And why do they assume there are no side suns? Does any of this make any sense? Hey, dude. If it's there, we can see it. Which is not true. Because in the whole yin and the yang of things, where there is white and black, that the binary companion of the sun, which is light, might be darkness or dark matter. So, if we don't understand dark matter, obviously, our non-existent dark matter cameras are not going to be able to pick it up. And if it is surrounded by a giant dust cloud of debris, its light wouldn't be able to escape it. Things really heated up in the 80s, and the search for the 10th planet hadn't been given the stigma of tinfoil hat wearers. It seemed that the same thing to do, because I'm going to read Astronomy, Search for the 10th Planet, December 1981. Astronomers are readying telescopes to probe the outer reaches of our solar system for an elusive planet much larger than Earth. Its existence would explain a 160-year-old mystery. Pull exerted by its gravity would account for a wobble in Uranus's orbit that was first detected in 1821 by a French astronomer, Alex Bouvard. Beyond Pluto in the cold, dark regions of space may lie an undiscovered 10th planet two to five times the size of Earth. Van Flandern thinks the 10th planet may have between two and five Earth masses and lie 50 to 100 astronomical units from the Sun. An astronomical unit is the mean distance between Earth and the Sun. Aha, but here, his team also presumes that like Pluto, plane of the undiscovered body is tilted with respect to that of most other planets and that its path around the Sun is highly elliptical. New York Times, June 19th, 1982. A pair of American spacecraft may help scientists detect what could be a 10th planet or a giant object billions of miles away. The space agency said that persistent irregularities in the orbits of Uranus and Neptune suggest some kind of mystery object is really there. The space agency said that persistent irregularities in the orbits of Uranus and Neptune suggest some kind of mystery object is really there. With its distance depending on what it is. If the mystery object is a new planet, it may lie 5 billion miles the outer orbital ring of known planets. If it is a dark star type of object, it may be 50 billion miles beyond the known planets. If it is a black hole, 100 billion miles. Newsweek, does the sun have a dark companion? June 28, 1982. When scientists noticed that Uranus wasn't following its predicted orbit, for example, they didn't question their theories. Instead, they blamed the anomalies on a yet unseen planet. According to John Anderson of the Jet Propulsion Lab, in Pasadena, California, this odd behavior suggests that the sun has an unseen companion, a dark star gravitationally bound to it, but billions of miles away. Other scientists suggest that the most likely cause of the orbital snags is a 10th planet 4 to 7 billion miles beyond Neptune. Astronomy, searching for a 10th planet, October 1982. 
The hunt for new worlds has not ended. Both Uranus and Neptune follow irregular paths that observers can only explain by assuming the presence of an unknown body whose gravity tugs at the two planets. Astronomers originally thought that Pluto might be the body perturbing its neighbor, but the combined mass of Pluto and its moon shot on is too small for such a role. So they were wrong. Astronomers and scientists wrong, imagine that. First, the object could be a planet, but any world large and close enough to affect the orbits of Uranus and Neptune should already have been spotted. Searchers might have missed a planet, though, if it's unusually dark or it has an odd orbit. Yeah, not close to the elliptic. New York Times, January 30th, 1983. Recent calculations by the United States Naval Observatory have confirmed that the orbital, orbital perturbation exhibited by Uranus and Neptune, which Dr. Thomas C. Van Flandern, an astronomer at the observatory, says could be explained by a single undiscovered planet. He and his colleague, Dr. Richard Harrington, calculate that the 10th planet should be two to five times more massive than Earth and have a highly elliptical orbit. How about this? Mike Brown, the guy who discovered all these planets, the guy who discovered the majority of the new planetoids, is the guy who discovered Sedna in 2003, said, Sedna is a very odd object. It shouldn't be there. It never comes anywhere close to any of the giant planets or the sun. It's way, way out there on this incredibly eccentric orbit. December 1982. Astronomy. Mysterious Planet X. Something must be out there, astronomers believe, because the orbits of Neptune and Uranus deviate slightly from what they should be, according to the law of physics. A mysterious object, a planet, or perhaps a brown dwarf, so seem to be tugging them off course. Can the object be a planet, or is it a brown dwarf? A star that didn't quite make it. Or could it be a neutron star? A star that has gravitationally collapsed into a densely packed, dark remnant of its former luminous self. Which is fascinating because the neutron star is kind of a newer concept, and the more we've learned about it, I would think that the sun has a neutron star, uh, or a binary companion. A brown dwarf or a neutron star, much more massive than a planet, would be located perhaps 50 billion miles away, would tug evenly on both pioneers, a nearby brown dwarf may be located by other means. Although not hot enough to shine, such a dark star radiates in the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. These theories have their critics. Planet X, skeptics say, would have to be as massive as Uranus. If that were the case, it should have long since been discovered by conventional observations. As the camera went through a technological explosion of awesomeness and goodness and high quality pixels and power to now, technologies we have available to all of us are amazing. Given all the data NASA gives us, it's spectacular. Rule number two in the hunt for Planet X, don't date your shiz. Don't date it, man. Dating only makes you look like a fool. And this goes out to like the Nancy the Zetas or the Harold Campos camping of the world. Like if you're gonna date it, I wouldn't argue with Isaac Newton. He's the godfather of science or the father of science. So rule number two, don't date your shit in the hunt for Planet X. Rule number three, have an imagination. I don't know if you're a doom junkie and just want doom. Like nobody knows when these planets are coming around. And that even applies to like NASA. Like when NASA talks about Sedna's orbit, if you look at its elongated orbit, one would think that when the planet comes around the corners, it's going to travel a lot faster. And that I think stars can display properties we're not aware of yet. So on something as far as like Sedna, until we know a full rotation, I don't think we know the time, the speed, the place of rotation. So don't date your shit. Have some imagination. If you just want to look at classically, romantically, like, hey, this new planet's going to show up and everything's going to be awesome. That is awesome. If you're a doom junkie, you just want to doom, well, I guess this is as good a place as any. Though I would recommend economics. And all doom is in financials. Ooh, I shouldn't do that. My mistake, I let this video get way too big, get way out of hand. I lost my place. Fudge, I apologize to you, but I guess there's no way you're still watching. Because I rambled off and spun out of there to where I was talking about nothing important. Okay, well, come back now, you hear? Thanks.